Thanks for joining. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about Elasticsearch. We're going to talk about Elasticsearch in the context of logs. Actually, Elasticsearch or OpenSearch, we're, for most of our scope, it doesn't really matter. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to talk about them in the context of logs and other time series data. And we're going to focus on how to um, auto-scale them using an operator on Kubernetes. So the agenda would be first to talk a bit about the use case, why you would want to do that to yourself, and then um, about like how we're going to do this, what we're trying to automate here, and then the available operators, the operators that are already there that can do stuff like that. And then we're going to end with a demo. So let us introduce ourselves first. I'm Radu, I'm a search guy at Sematext. I work with um, Elasticsearch, OpenSearch, and Solar, um, doing most of my time like doing consulting, production support, and training for those. And I also help out with Sematext Cloud, which is our general observability product. Okay. Hi, I'm Ciprian. I'm a DevOps uh, slash uh, software engineer working for PolyPoly. Um, I also do consulting for Kubernetes and uh, infrastructure automation. Um, I am also a software maintainer for Kubernetes uh, projects like uh, KOps, which is Kubernetes operations, uh, ITCD manager, and cloud provider AWS, uh, and also contributor for many of the Kubernetes ecosystem projects. So. Thank you. All right, so let's start with the use case. Um, the idea is if we have a, a small Elasticsearch cluster, we want to automate as much as possible. The dream, the buzzword is um, zero maintenance, but yeah, it's a buzzword. Um, but yeah, we want to uh, basically just give people a cluster that they can send logs to and um, you know not worry that much about it. Larger clusters tend to be more like snowflakes. We need to be more aware of what the load patterns are, how the mapping looks like, and stuff like that when managing them. So we don't really have this in our mind when we're talking about a Kubernetes operator. But in some situations, you might be able, for example, let's say you have a multi-tenant um, application, you might be able to say, okay, let's have one cluster per tenant, and then we have the previous problem. Like we have many small clusters that they can hopefully kind of manage themselves. Moving on to how, so what we're trying to automate. Um, just to make sure we're all on the same page, I want to talk a bit about time-based indices and why that's a good idea. And then I'm going to argue that for most use cases, um, uh, you ro ro rotating indices by size is going to be a better idea. And then I'm going to talk about how that uh, would work in the context of scaling up and down um, an Elasticsearch cluster. Okay, so time-based indices, if you use Logstash or any other uh, log shipper, you've probably seen this a lot, like one index per day, one index per month, one index per hour, something like that. The advantages are pretty much across the board. Like we're, we're training a bit of cluster state, so we're going to have more indices, more shards. But uh, compared to having just one index, we're going to have much faster indexing because we're going to do much less um, um, segment merging while indexing. That's our main bottleneck. Um, we're going to have much faster searches because let's say I'm looking at the past two hours, I'm only hitting the latest index. Obviously, that's going to be faster. But even if I'm looking at the whole data set, all their indices will be done. So they're much easy, easier to cache. So even if I'm looking at more indices, if I'm looking the whole, at the whole data, those searches will be faster too. One thing to mention here is that if you're using Kibana, even if you're looking at the last two hours, Kibana will look at your whole index pattern. So if your index pattern is log stash star, it's still going to hit all the indices. But Elasticsearch has this cool like shard pre-filtering feature where it looks at your date range and it looks at the date range of each shard and it's going to be relatively cheaply able to just discard shards. Like you, you'll see that in the response. It says shard skipped and you can get a number. Um, and then 
when it comes to deleting data, it's obviously much cheaper to delete entire indices than to uh, delete data from within an index, which will cause more segment merges. In practice, we might end up having multiple time series indices sliced by how we're querying. So let's say um, I search for syslog separately quite often, then it makes sense to take uh, syslog data off on its own time series and, um, and have it like that. Purely time-based indices suffer from what we call the Black Friday problem. So if the indexing throughput is uneven, then we might end up with huge indices on one hand, which are going to be slower to index, slower to search, and very small indices on the other hand, which are bloating the um, cluster state unnecessarily. So to fix that, we can rotate indices by size. Um, so um, th this will give us a much more consistent um, both write and read throughput. And our rule of thumb here is to rotate at 10 gigabytes per shard. I've put a link there in the slides. The slides will be public, of course, with some performance testing on, on how we determine that. But of course, there's some com com sorry, there's some complexity that we're trading off uh, with, with this design. So first of all, we have to create like our first index and make a right alias point to it. And then our log shipper will write to that right alias. And then this alias will have to be managed. So we have to do this rotation at every, let's say, 10 gigabytes per shard. Uh, usually this is uh, can be easily automated with index lifecycle management in Elasticsearch. In OpenSearch, it's called index state management. They do pretty much the same thing. One notable difference is that with index state management, you have to say, um, rotate at X, say, gigabytes per index. So if we change the number of shards, we need to also adjust the this um, state management policy. With index lifecycle management, you can just say primary shard size X, and then no matter how many primary shards you have, you don't, you don't have to worry about that. It will just work. Um, other uh, things are, um, it's if you still hit all the indices like Kibana does, like with log slash star, it's going to work just the same. It's going to look at the um, time ranges and it's going to skip shards that are not involved. Um, you can still like cache this sort of information on the application, but obviously it's, it's more awkward than having dates in the index name, right? And it's the same when we want to delete data. It's, it's going to be a bit more complex. Usually those... Um, management kind of plugins will, will deal with that. Um, another problem is when we backfill. So if I'm importing data from last week, it's going to um, go into the latest index because that's where my right alias is and it's going to mess up those time ranges a little bit. Okay, so on to the actual auto scaling bit. So let's start with the smallest cluster. Let's say we have two nodes, we have one index, uh, one shard per index, and we have one replica per primary shard. We want to start with the lowest number of shards possible where we still have a balance across our cluster because we don't want to bloat our cluster state. We don't have want to have too many shards. Um, when it comes to performance, that's not really a problem because we can still fully use the CPU while indexing if we want to, even though we have one shard per node. When searching, we have one thread per search per shard, so that's somewhat limiting, but it's usually okay. If we're looking at the last, let's say, two hours, that's usually gonna be a fast search anyway. If we're looking at a longer time range, then we're going to naturally paralyze because we're gonna hit more indices, so we're gonna spawn more threads with our search. So usually that's okay. However, if, when we add the third node, we won't be able to use it for indexing. Even if we over sharded, if we had more shards than, um, than nodes, we would probably not have a perfect balance in our cluster, and I'll show you that in a bit. So our suggestion is, even if we maybe did not get to our 10 gigabytes per shard, we can force a rollover, okay? So we can use the rollover API to create a new index. Before we do that, we need to update our index template to change from one shard per index to three shards in order to have a perfect balance. And then we, we do this force rotation. 
we will also want to use total shards per node to enforce a balance because otherwise we might get into a race kind of situation. So when we add a new node, it's obviously not going to have any shards initially and Elasticsearch is going to start to balance them out. But if I'm creating the uh, new index right away, maybe the cluster isn't perfectly balanced at that point and so Elasticsearch will have a tendency of creating though a lot of those new shards into my new node which will make that new node the bottleneck so total shards per node will help with that okay let's say we add a fourth node now we do have a perfect balance on the face of it but for indexing it's not like some nodes will have two shards of the latest index some nodes will have just one so it's not we're going to have bottlenecks in our cluster so again we can um, change the index template to have two shards per node, this is going to be enough for four nodes, and, and force rollover. Now let's say we want to go back down, our load is, you know, we have less load and we want to go back down. So we need to do two things. Uh, actually we need to do one thing, to drain the node, but like how do we do that? We exclude it from, from allocation, and then shard, uh, Elasticsearch will move the shards off it, but if we use total shards per node, that might get in the way. So we need to either remove or relax the total shards per node constraint of existing indices in order for them to be moved to the other nodes. And then we can safely shut down the node. And then once we do that, we do the same thing. Like we change um, the index template. Now we have three shards per node again, uh, sorry, per index again. And um, we, we create a new index, we, we move on from there. So you can, you can see where this is going, right? Um, some other, let's call them best practices, um, one of them rega with regards to, to scaling, we usually, for most use cases, we want to scale based on disk space. So here's my thinking, um, even though usually for logs your predominant workload is going to be indexing, you're going to use a lot of CPU while indexing, you're going to do not so many searches maybe. Um, but uh, let, let's give an example. So um, if we want to ingest 10 megabytes per second, this laptop, Cipriano's laptop, can do it rather easily. But if we want to keep that data for a month, then we have about three terabytes. And even if this had the disk space, it would be rather complicated to load like a Kibana dashboard with three terabytes of data. So we would probably need more laptops and then that, those would be able to ingest more. So in practice, we would have, we would know up front, like you know, on this laptop, on this node, we can fit, let's say, one or two terabytes of data, and then when we get there, we just add more nodes, right? So, we we can scale on anything we want, right? Um, and we'll we'll talk about that. Like uh, existing operators can scale on CPU, a number of shards, and stuff like that. But in practice, what what I find is that in most use cases, we just look at disk space and and scale based on that. Speaking of disks. Um, Searches are going to do lots of random I.O., right? The, the query part and also the aggregations part are, is going to do a lot of random I.O. So if you're using a cloud provider, it probably makes sense to go with ephemeral storage, so which is usually backed by local SSDs, um, which is because that's going to be much faster than even if you're still using SSDs with persistent storage because that goes over the network and introduces extra latency. So it's, it's not that important that it has a lot of IOPS and, and a lot of throughput, but if the latency is, is not very good, then our searches are gonna be slower and then we can put less data on a node. We're gonna have more nodes, it's gonna cost more. Um, obviously the downside is if we lose the node, we lose the storage, so we may need to have either just backups or extra replicas to make up for that. Uh, last but not least, I want to talk a bit about the tier setup. First of all, we don't support this in, in anything we've done. Um, so, but in, in practice, I've seen that this is, it, this is rarely useful um, because I've seen situations where, uh, a lot of situations where the cold setup was like, okay, we can just put some spinning disks on there. It doesn't work because the cluster becomes unstable. It cannot kind of monitor itself and stuff like that. And then I've seen situations where, yeah, you had good enough hardware on the cold storage, and then it begs the question, should it be a cold storage or should it be used for indexing because the CPUs are idling? 
So in practice, I've, I've rarely seen a situation where hot cold makes sense. So we're, we're kind of back to just one tier. Okay. Your turn. My turn. Okay, so um, how we wanted to go about this. Uh, first of all, operators are not a new thing uh, for Kubernetes. So we thought, okay, let's look for something that already exists. Even if it's not perfect, then yeah, maybe it can be improved. The most popular one, let's say, or <laughs> most seen is the Elastic uh, Cloud on Kubernetes operator. Uh, but uh, because of uh, licenses and limitations is not uh, necessarily a good thing, uh, at least for our use case where we wanted something simple and um, without too many strings attached, that was not a good fit. Uh, next, uh, I think uh, one of the oldest and uh, still maintained operator is the Zalando one. Um, it has a good license, uh, it has auto-scaling, drains pods, adjusts replicas, uh, it's quite nice, uh, works with, uh, works in production, at least, I think, for them. Um, and uh, we started working on this um, for the use case that Radu presented uh, before. Um, to get it started, so what we'll see later in the demo, it uh, it wasn't such a big deal. We did a lot of uh, hard coding and uh, tuning. We commented some code that was not working for us, and in the end it worked. Um, but uh, it wasn't exactly the architecture that we, we were comfortable with. Um, and then we noticed that Opster started uh, an open search Kubernetes operator too. Um, it's not uh, as full feature as the Zalando, uh, but at least for our use case, um, it was good enough. I mean, yes, it doesn't have uh, auto scaling yet, uh, but can be added and. Um, also has a bit of a cleaner architecture. So we, we started again <laughs> uh, trying to, to do the same thing with Opster. Um, it's still work in progress, but it's, uh, it's going quite well, from my point of view at least. OK, next, uh, demo. Uh, in the interest of uh, saving time, uh, I prepared already a Kubernetes cluster with uh, some uh, with the Zalando operator installed and uh, two nodes. Um, I also have uh, uh, let's see. Okay, so this is uh, the small Elasticsearch cluster, um, a master node, and the two data, uh, two data nodes. Um, okay. Uh, so let's look at what we have on the node. Um, Okay, um, we have a cluster that, ah, let's see. So the cluster is green. Uh, you can see the two data nodes here. Um, there is an index called logstash01, uh, which already has uh, some data in it. Um, there is a, a component template and template uh, for that index. So. Uh, you can see here we have log stash and scaling. Uh, this was done by the operator when uh, when it started. Um, 
and there is a write alias that goes to this uh, index um, so that uh, we can uh, rotate with the uh, ISM. Um, okay, so this is the scaling template, which is uh, good for the two data nodes and the ISM uh, policy. Okay, as Radu said, we want to rotate on 10 gigabytes. Um, and if not, seven days. Um, okay. So at the moment, there is uh, already 13% uh, disk usage on uh, these two uh, these two nodes. Uh, the goal is to add more data, and uh, then. Uh, the cluster should uh, scale up uh, once uh, the disk threshold has been reached. Um, let's start it and uh, talk a bit. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, we should see immediately that uh, this usage starts to go up. Um, and we should start the operator. We start it from here. It's still development, <laughs> so <laughs> not exactly uh, production ready. Uh, we can see that uh, I think it already reached the 15. Oh, <laughs> the threshold was uh, at 50% that we set for it to go. So it already got to that. It's uh, it noticed that uh, it reached it, and now it wants to add a new replica. So a new node should follow soon. Uh, as soon as that node comes up, uh, we should see. Uh, we should see the operator adjusting uh, everything so that it suits uh, the new setup uh, better. Um, let's see how how things look uh, here. No. Okay, so there's a data pod coming up. Um, hopefully it should uh, be up pretty soon. <laughs> Usually in testing was much faster. <laughs> okay, uh, let's look a bit at the config file until uh, this uh, comes up. So the operator has its own uh, CRD, uh, which is called the Elasticsearch dataset. Um, you could set uh, the volumes template, like for this we wanted 10 gigabytes. Um, you can set uh, the disk usage percent for scaling up and down, mean and max replicas, so you don't get uh, overbuilt if uh, something uh, unexpected happens, uh, and also, uh, some cooldown uh, for uh, scaling up and down so that uh, you don't uh, scale up uh, abruptly uh, and don't give uh, enough time to rebalance uh, for the cluster. Okay, like you can see here. Um, good. So let's look at uh, what, uh, what the operator did. Um, let's see. Uh, it, the scaling template was uh, updated. Uh, now it has three shards. Um, and the ISM policy was updated too. Uh, also, the right alias uh, was changed. Uh, let's see 
here aliases. So you can see that uh, already we have uh, the second and the third index. I think uh, that's because uh, there is another uh, node coming up. Um, we have um, the indices, uh, which have uh, primary shards uh, based on uh, the number of nodes. And let's see how the ISM policy looks. Um, the ISM policy is at 20 gigs, I think, uh, because we had uh, four shards. Uh, so I think uh, we're quite good. Now we want to see what happens when we remove some data, I guess. I'm putting too many logs already. <laughs> um, so let's delete some uh, some things uh, from from here and see if uh, the operator is uh, removing uh, any nodes. Um, we don't want to remove the last index. Uh, because uh, this one is connected to the right alias. So we will start with uh, the biggest one, uh, which is uh, the first. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's see if uh, the operator notice, notices things. It should... Um, it should notice that uh, there is not uh, any need for um, for the extra nodes and uh, just scale down the cluster to the two nodes, which is the minimum uh, size of uh, the, uh, the data set that we configured here. Okay. Okay. So... I think we need to delete a little more, right? Or ah, yeah, they're still not uh, balanced, so maybe deleting some more uh, indices would help. Mm hmm so okay so let's see okay so now things are going back uh, to how it was in the beginning scaling down uh, updating the scaling template and ism and should go like this uh, up until those two nodes uh, that remain um, yes, that concludes the demo. Thank you for uh, for watching uh, and for being with us. Uh, so, if you have any questions or feedback, please do. Thank you. <laughs> so, I noticed in the demo that uh, there was the index uh, dot. Uh, open distro. So does it mean that the Zalando's operator, uh, basically, the you know, if you want to use it, you are stick with, I guess, 
the maximum would be Elasticsearch 7.10, right? You stick with the op open source mm. flavor. No, we actually tried very hard to use the open search. Yeah, I mean, but it's uh, by default the it open works. Distro with basically, uh, is deprecated. You should upgrade to open search if you, right because open distro is no longer maintained actively. It's like uh, you should upgrade, right? Or basically, what kind of uh, which version of Elasticsearch are you are we looking at right now? If I'm not wrong, it's OpenSearch 1.3 that we have there. I think there's like the index naming is says Open Distro, but it's actually OpenSearch. Um, so Zalando's operator was was made to work with Elasticsearch, but it also works for OpenSearch, right? So this one will work for both. Opster will work only with OpenSearch, I think, and Elastics obviously will work with Elasticsearch. But this one, for the moment, works with both. Uh, depending on how they'll di diverge, yeah. Any other questions? Come on. <laughs> well, if not, thank you very much. We'll be around.